I love history. Did your yeah. wife keep her maiden name? Man, I tried to call you. Did you change your number? Man, what you wearing? You smell good. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Muchos thank you. Oh, we now welcome in Anthony Kastrovitz <laughs> for the pen is mightier. And you had something drop a little while ago about the most interesting guy at each camp. Well, the most interesting guy here at MLB Network is by far Harold Reynolds. But oh, we will, that, but. there was no write up on it. <laughs> It's still in the draft it's just, it's in still Anthony's in the draft. computer. They burned that that copy. So let's get through it, Anthony. Uh, going, you have a, you have a guy for every single team, but we we obviously don't have time for that. But no. we do have time for a couple of the guys that are perhaps the most interesting of the interesting. So let's start at Padres. <laughs> Yeah, Fernando Tatis Jr. is probably the most interesting player in any camp, right? He's one of the most talented players in MLB, but has not played in 18 months for various reasons, injury and suspension related. Um, you know, when I spoke to their president of baseball operations, A.J. Preller, in Arizona last week, uh, well, well, first he complimented my Springsteen poster, so that, that's the most important thing. But the second <laughs> thing he said was that Tatis... Uh, you know, he, he understands he has a lot to prove to a lot of people, you know, after everything that, that went down last year. So, uh, you know, Tatis was an early arrival in camp and he's been smiley and loose with reporters. And, um, you know, he said his shoulder no longer feels like it's going to pop out. That's a good thing, right? Uh, he, hey, he said Anthony, his wrist right is there, there real quick. Did he have surgery yeah. on the shoulder or no? There's been so many yeah. reports. Uh, from, from what uh, Preller has said and the team has said, yeah, he had the surgery and he had the uh, wrist surgery as well. Um, now, the wrist is not as far along as the shoulder, but but it's getting there. And, and so he, he seems to be in a good place physically is the point. And his spirits seem to be high as well. And he also seems to be really be embracing this challenge of what looks to be a full-time move to the outfield now. He'll likely be in right field, uh, Juan Soto in left, Trent Grisham in center. That that seems to be the most likely alignment. So going to be fascinating to watch it all play out this year. That's got to be tough, though, going through camp, knowing that you're still going to miss the first 20 games of the season, no? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's part of the the, the punishment. You know, that's yeah. that's the hard part of it, going through it. And then you're not eligible to go travel with the team and work out and do all that stuff. So, yeah. All right, moving on, Anthony, to the Orioles. Who you got? Yeah, the Orioles, I got uh, Grayson Rodriguez. And, and really, you know, he and Andrew Painter of the Phillies, they're, they're both interesting for the same reason. These are the top two pitching prospects in baseball, and they both have a legit chance of earning an opening day uh, roster spot. Um, but Rodriguez is particularly interesting to me because of the Orioles offseason where, you know, based on some comments from leadership there, I think fans and media, we were led to believe it would be a, a much more dynamic offseason than it was for the O's. Now they did add, uh, you know, Kyle Gibson and Cole Irvin to their to their pitching staff. So they they lengthened that group a little bit. But, you know, they didn't get the high end uh, caliber pitching that you would like to see that club to take the next natural step in their progression. So it, ha it has to come internally, really. And, and Rodriguez, it, it's not just a situation where, you know, oh, maybe he has a chance to crack an opening day uh, rotation spot. They, they legitimately want him, you know, to, to be a guy in that mix from the start of this season. We didn't get to see him last year at the big leagues. Uh, he was kind of delayed from the service time. And then he had the lat strain. So, um, but he's, he's ready to go now and, and you know, see if he can lock down that spot. Yeah, he's, he's, he's pretty special, no doubt. And Painter, too, you touched on. Yeah. All right, give us another one real quick. Who else you got? Uh, next, let's go to Shintaro Fujinami of the A's. Who I'm I glad you said his name. <laughs> <laughs> is that why you just teed me up like that? Exactly. I see you <laughs> um, I think this is one of the more interesting acquisitions of the offseason that you know no one really talked about. 28 years old, comes over from Japan. Now, for those who don't know, this guy was in the same draft class in Japan as one Shohei yeah. Otani. And we all know what happened to Otani. Now, I Fujinami, the delivery. he was straight out of high school, 19 years old, straight to, you know, the Japanese major leagues and a star right away. He was a four-time all-star. Um, and then it appears that he was basically overused and he had some command issues and um, just just seemed to kind of fall by the wayside a little bit relative to how his career started. Uh, but he, you know, last year was better from a command perspective. He comes over to the States. The A's were that team, that, you know, perfect position uh, to give him innings as a starter as opposed to re a reliever. So um, so he'll be stretched out this spring. He'll get every chance to, to impact that club in a major he, way. So is be, he, he's not going to pitch in a WBC then, I, I take it. Uh, no, so he's got a, you know, he's got a great opportunity here to, you know, become a big league mainstay. So that's important. 
keep yeah. his health in priority. All right, uh, moving to Miami, the show cover boy. Tell us why you've got <laughs> your eye on him. Yeah, MLB the show. Every uh, every teenager, I guess, has their eye on him when they when they load that baby up. But uh, Jazz Chisholm uh, is uh, an interesting guy in general, right? He's a rising star in this game. We saw that last season, the first half of last season, what a dynamic player he could be. But he had knee and back issues that really hampered him in the second half. And then the Marlins make that trade for Luis Arias, and the most interesting aspect of that is Jazz Chisholm raises his hand and says, hey, I'll move from second base to center field. You don't see that too often, middle infield to uh, to center field, the uh, you know the Robin Yount type move, I guess you could say. Uh, and, and so he's got that, you know, he's coming back from injury and he's got the positional adjustment. And he has said that, you know, he believes that he could be one of the best players in this league when he's healthy. So let's see it. You know, this is a, a, a great spring for him to, to start to show people that again. Okay, who else do you have your eye on at the Mets? And the Mets, uh, another prospect, Francisco Alvarez, catching prospect. And, um, you know, also with the Yankees, you know, you got Anthony Volpe. So in both New York teams, you got, you know, prominent prospects in MLB with, you know, with, with you know, big uh, opportunity here in big league camp. Now with Alvarez, it's a slim path to a opening day job. We know that, you know, they got Omar Narvaez and Tomas Nito and, and those guys will be, you know, their catchers on the big league roster, barring injury. So Alvarez is probably not going to start the season in the big leagues. Um, they do, however, this team needs power. You know, that's the one knock on their off season is they didn't go out and get that power bad. So maybe it will come internally and they don't have much help at DH. They, they do not appear to want to use Alvarez as a DH. They value his catching development too much, but you know, this guy is so talented that you could see him ha having a sensational spring and, and really making things awkward there in Port St. Lucie. That's what I root for. Anyway, we root for the awkwardness of, of top prospects, uh, you know, really showcasing their skills. But even if he doesn't crack the opening day roster, he's not far behind. You know, you, you, instant, you mentioned Volpe. I haven't seen video of him yet. Uh, have you got a chance to see him? Or what are some of the word coming out of Yankee camp? I know there was a little write-up in the, uh, yeah. the, the New York papers today in the Post talking about him. Yeah, so I've only seen him on video. I've not seen him in person, but, uh, you know, you get the next Derek Jeter comps from the most sensational of uh, prospect uh, analysts, and, hey, maybe he'll be that, but, you know, they've got – He's um, only about six few... inches shorter than Jeter, by the way. <laughs> Just saying. They've got, <laughs> they've got a few options there um, at, at shortstop, and, you know, I, that's another one where I don't necessarily think he'll be the opening day guy, barring – you know, an absolutely absurd spring, but you never know. I mean, this is a guy they've obviously valued in terms of how they've approached free agency the last two years. They've had, you know, two historically deep, great shortstop classes, and the Yankees have said, eh, we're good. So let's see it. You know, let's see why they were so confident in what they have in-house. Well, if you want to know who the most interesting guy is on your team, you can go to MLB.com and check out Anthony Castro Vince's article. Thanks so much for the time.